Hey guys, it's Ellen, and today is Monday, and we're doing Mini Monday Madness. We're just doing some super simple butterflies ink and wash tutorial today. Let's just get back to basic, simple little designs, cute little butterflies. I go over everything step by step. Um, if you're a Patreon member, you can download Traceable, but I teach you guys how to draw the butterflies. So we're going to be working with a pen and ink with a Sharpie pen and with a fountain pen so, you know, to play around with that as well. And very simple watercolor bleed too. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Also, if you haven't hit the bell notification button, please do so so you know my tutorial's up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And like I said, if you're on Patreon, you could download the Traceable. Patreon's a place where I have uh, exclusive tutorials on Thursdays, ad-free videos from YouTube, traceables, reference photos, and live stream in the top tier once a month for me. It's a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much, and you can check it out up here. So without further ado, let's fly off and paint some butterflies. Okay guys, so let's start off by you know teaching you how to draw the butterflies. Like I said, if you're on Patreon, you can download the um, traceable butterflies. There's tons of tutorials, I'm sure, on YouTube on butterflies. But pretty straightforward and simple. So there's a the little head. Right, let me zoom in. <laughs> Circle, and just kind of go down for the body like this. This particular butterfly, and even go down a little further for his, the whole body. And then for the monarch, just gonna kind of go out. Out like that, kind of swing back in, like that, swing back in, and then for the bottom part, curve down, up, and over like that. Right, and then we have all the little edging, so you kind of wiggling like that. And then for the wings here, this part was going to be mostly black, so you're going to take from the middle of the, the wing here, kind of do a curve. Wiggle, same thing here, curve, wiggle, here. And then we do these lines, see, line here, curve, line in here, bring it down. I mean, you can go on to the, the internet and you can see all kinds of um, pictures. And here, it's gonna be mostly black, but we'll put some white gouache dots for the monarch. And there'll be white dots here. And then down here, you're just gonna be doing, again, we'll get painting mostly like orange here. And then we're doing some black lines that come down the monarch and then of course the little and then for the side one again with the head and a bigger body like this and then I kind of go up and we go we go we go we go we go and then take another one come down and this one will have more indentations that you notice right and you know it could have the little fuzzies if you want to make it realistic. And then of course the antennae. And this one will have lines like this. And then we'll paint in an area that's kind of gray like in here. And then we'll leave some dots that are here. This one's really dark, but I'm gonna make it um you can make it butterflies can be anything you want, and really decorative butterflies. If you want to do realistic ones, go look on the internet and here's the little legs. And then we'll have a little, like this little kind of flower here. So there's tons of vector images on the internet that you can use for butterflies. So you don't have to fret too much. Um, again, so for my uh, <laughs> with supplies, two three inch um, squares of R 100% cotton cold pressed paper. I've already got my trace down image here. I have my palette here, my paints. Um, I'll be working with my Princeton 8 long round, and maybe my 4. I mean, the 8's pretty straightforward. We can start off using the Sharpie, right? And then we can go into using, afterwards, a, just a, um, this little nib. I don't even know why I picked this up. I think I had it in my house. You can find just a cheap little nib type, like, you know, writing pen here anywhere, like Michael's Hobby Lobby, online Amazon, and then just get the fountain ink, right, for this pen and ink tutorial. And as I'll go over the paints as I use them, but you know, we're going to be making oranges and blues, so it's going to be pretty simple and straightforward. So once you have your traced down um, image, right, then I'm going to go and take my Sharpie. Yay, the pen and ink. And then we're going to go back over the Sharpie with it later on with the uh, fountain ink, but you don't want to do that in the beginning because when you go to put the watercolor down, it is going to bleed. 
It's the last thing you do. So you could paint the watercolor first and then go back in and use the fountain pen. It just helps people if they draw it again with the Sharpie and then go back as a guide. So again, we're just gonna go in and we're gonna fill in the lines. And you don't have to do all of them. It may be helpful to just do like a little pen and ink guide. You know? Again, this is gonna help you like with the drawing aspect of it. I think if you're really good at, you know, the more you draw, the better your designs will be. So I'm going back in here and kind of putting in those lines again. And I can just fill color over the Sharpie because it's permanent, it won't bleed. That's what's great about it. It's just a great, easy beginner tool to help guide you doing this process. All right, let me get the little antennae. I like doing the uh, ink and wash with the Sharpie first. See, just drawing it. Again, you can see me draw it again with the Sharpie. Whoops. I can make a little fuzzy by wiggling the pen. And again, here we go. We're going up and over and just do these little scalloped edges and bigger ones for the bottom one. And then I had like little tiny lines on this one. It's a butterfly. It's a magical creature. You can make it anything you want. You don't have to follow everything that I do. You can change everything about it. The color. So I had this little like thistle flower. It's just basically doing these like little V's on lines with the lines like this. And the little legs for the butterfly and then the antennae. It's like a, just a, it could be like a corn flower, just a simple flower. All right, once I get all that down, just drawing the little circles, whatnot. So we're done with the Sharpie part. I always like to erase the lines because I don't want to see the pencil lines and the Sharpie lines. You don't need it, it's redundant. And like I said, you don't have to use the Sharpie pen, you can just use pencil. So I like to do things in kind of like called coordinates. So they kind of go together. It may make sense, right? I mean, you could do totally different butterflies. You don't have to make them go together. I'm picking designs where the monarch is like mostly orange and black and some white. And this guy is going to be blue, orange, black, and white. So we'll start off with the monarch. So I'm going to gather my paintbrush, number eight. Got to make some orange. I already have this color here, which is nice, um, this cadmium red light. I could use my brilliant orange right out of the tube, but since I already have the cadmium red here, I'll just take that. It's a pretty decent color, and it's actually perfect. We can bleed in some like more um, red color. And then grab my cadmium yellow deep. It'll make a nice orange. That's perfect orange. And if you want a little red top hair, it can be a little, a little more on the red side. You could just bleed some of this cadmium red light in here. This is gonna be so fast and easy. So you take the orange, right? We're just gonna be painting. Uh, paper towel is always good. People ask me how much water. If you feel like you have too much water on your brush, you just kind of tap it. I'm just gonna fill this in really quickly. The body is gonna be black, by the way. Black, deep gray. <laughs> why I like this paper for this particular exercise, even though he's like, well, it's small, why would you even bother? because we can bleed in that nice, pretty red color. See, it's very wet. You can see this color is pretty wet. I'm just going through this whole area here. The bottom half will be black. If you messed up, don't worry about it because then the other stuff is gonna be black and so it's gonna go right over it. You don't have to fret too much. Just gonna fill this in. La la la. Pick an easy one. For today, um, it's been a long <laughs> week for me, crazy, and uh, you know, I know it's Monday, but the whole weekend and everything last week was a little nuts. So, try to get my footing back into work. Picking a simple one. So we get this filled in, grab that cadmium red light, and then bleed some of this color up in here. 
tip of the brush. I want a little bit darker up here, maybe around the body too. So he has like a nice bleed. You don't have to put a lot of paint, just a little bit. See, I'm just taking the tip of my brush. It's a nice pretty bleed. Get a little more paint that's less water on the edge here. A nice little bleed, and you can put a little more on the edge too. If you want to do that. Like I said, you'd have to follow what I'm doing. If you want to put more yellow tones in there, got that cabin yellow light. Just water that down a little bit. Put some more yellow tones in the bottom here. Just change it up a little bit. We have that orange. So you're going to have to wait to all this rush. You can put a little bit of this orange in here, the body here. So the rest of it, you know, don't bother. It's going to be black with little dots. So we're going to wait for that. We're going to wait for that one to dry. I'm going to switch up to our other butterfly. Um, the photograph that I was looking at had mostly like gray up here with some dots and then blue down here. Like I said, I'm an artist. I can do what I want. <laughs> I'm going to do what I want. So yes, um, it's going to uh, the realistic butterfly is mostly going to be the gray black hair, but I'm going to play around and not do that. So I have my ultramarine blue. Gonna water that down. A really pretty color to use would have been this uh, Vernier blue I have, but mine's kind of dried out. I really like that blue. Kind of, kind of make the same blue if you take the ultramarine and put in a little bit of uh, white gouache. And I'll create that Verdier blue. It's a pretty pale blue. You can add white gouache to this watercolor. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> we are going to be using white gouache, obviously. So I'm going to grab that more. I'll turn blue, mix that color up. The dots, I'm going to be like orange, like we have with the monarchs, like I said, coordinates. So I'm going to put this pretty blue in. Don't do the dots. I'm going to fill it in with orange, and then I'm going to have black on the outline. So just loosely painting this. You don't have to worry if you get it out of the lines, around the lines. It's a real stylized look, which is fine. I'm going really fast. Like I said, this part was supposed to be gray. I might grab a little neutral tint, mix it with the Eldermain blue, get like a deep blue, then water this down for like the color tones. And I'll take the ultramarine blue up here. And I'll make that part instead of gray blue up here. I just didn't like the gray. I could do what I want. I just changed it up. Plus I think with the gray, with the with the um, ink and wash, you're not gonna really see it. So let's make this blue a little bit deeper than the one we put in the bottom. You can add a little neutral tint to it. You don't have to do anything to it. You can keep it really bright. And then I'll let these color. Now, I'm gonna let this dry because I'm gonna do an actual hard edge color in here. I'm not really gonna bleed in too many colors. It's a little dry. You could bleed in just a tip of your brush. Some darker tones just on the edges of the lines. See that? So it actually is dry. I'm gonna go take that same darker color. Well, it's bleeding a little bit. I wanna make a color like this. Kind of like an oval going in the center of that bottom wing part. Looks like that. You could grab a little neutral tint and make it a little bit darker. Bleeding in the color. I'm bleeding some of it up here. And then now I'm going to grab the neutral tint itself, water that down a little bit. I'm going to fill in the body. I'm not going to put too much water because I don't want it to bleed too much if it touches the other blue. Now you can decide at this point if you want your flower to be orange pink, red, blue, whatever. Since we're coordinating, you see, orange and blue, orange and blue and black, you wanna do 
Call the coordinates. So I'm gonna do some oranges with the red. I'm just taking the tip. I'm just gonna do this like little wee, wee, wee. sound effects. Just kind of wiggling the brush up and down. Just how you drew that kind of the same way. And then you can grab some of the red, leave that in. Little spots, little dots too up here. Gives it some like energy. All right, so we're done with that section. We can add a little green if you want to, like a stem in a bit. I'm gonna switch back. <laughs> it's maneuvering. This is really quick. So we take the neutral tint, and I also have a little bit of black gouache right here. The gouache is just gonna be real intense black. The neutral tint's gonna have this bluish gray tone to it, which is nice. But if you really want like a black color like the monarch butterflies have, I suggest if you have some black gouache. I always tell everybody to have black and white gouache along with the watercolor because you use those. So you can fill that in. We'll fill it in on the edges, the black. I didn't use them before, so I didn't think I needed to because my brush is so new that it has a great point. But if you're having difficulty, see how there's a lot of water? I could tell you before, pick it up with your brush and just put it on a paper towel if it's puddling too much. Grab that gouache. Just kind of wiggling. Sound effects. Just fill this in. All right, and we're gonna wait for that to dry when this fill is in, and we're gonna come back with the white gouache, and then we're gonna use the fountain pen. And do a kind of decorative, you know, ink designs with this. Just kind of filling this in. Oh, well, but before I do that, I'm sorry. I'm gonna switch back the little dots here. So we have orange. I'm gonna grab some concentrated color here. Yellow right from the tube, a little bit of red, make this nice pretty orange. So we're gonna do orange on these dots. We're gonna let those dry and we'll do black gouache next to them. And we'll come back and so I'm gonna let this dry, we're gonna come back and do the gouache and the pen the ink with the nib, and we'll finish it up. Okay, so we dried that. I'm gonna go back with my paintbrush. Just grab a little bit of this black gouache, zoom in, and we're just gonna make these little kind of like squiggly lines on the top and on the bottom, just like this. Really simple. So now at this point, you're gonna need white gouache as well, because we're gonna make the little white dots on the butterflies. So I put some white gouache down here, clean up my brush. Unless, you need water to move the gouache, obviously, to activate it, but you don't want too much because it becomes translucent, you want it opaque. So I just have a few dots here on this wing, a little bit bigger here. And there's some little white spots here and there on this one. And you can make more. And then on the body, same thing, like a little, there was a little white dot here, little teeny dots on the body and the little head there. Like I said, you can add more stuff. You don't have to do what I'm doing. The Monarch, a little bit bigger. So they're like a little line here, a little bit bigger here and then here and then we do little teeny ones kind of on the edge see like a little line and a little bigger and smaller and then little teeny dots on the edge and then there's a lot of teeny dots kind of on the edge here let's go along the edge and then the body the head little polka dot kind of head and little bit ones on the body. Have a little over here too. And put a couple more little dots on the wings here. Little teeny wings on the body. 
All right. Now we're going to take this guy. My fountain nib. Now, I talk about this all the time. Very careful using the ink because you can splotch it. And once you do, it's kind of over, game over. It's really tricky to kind of come back from that. So take your time when doing this. And I, why I like to do this on top of the Sharpie is because I like the thick and thin lines you can create with it. See, I'm taking my time. It can make a splatter and cause things to be ugly. And you don't want that. I also want to show you, so, so it looks like this little butterfly just hanging out here. Kind of boring, right? You could make this a little more exciting. I'll show you in a couple of my other um, ink and wash tutorials. I just do these like lines around the image. It gives it that movement feel to it. So I'm gonna do that here. I'm gonna outline a little bit. Oopsie, that kind of bled. But it's on black. So I got away with it. Okay, see? Little lines here. They're broken up though. A little by the wing. It gives it kind of like a movement feel to it. And decorative. You could add things and you can put words. Really simple. A stylized kind of look. Now I'm going to switch it to the other one. Let that dry a little bit. Oh, actually, I missed a little line here. Again, here we can do the little legs, go on the body. It's just going to add just another dimension by using this nib pen. I mean, you can paint the thick and thin lines. You don't even need to use this. I just like to use it. Kind of decorative. But like I said, be careful because one move and then you've got splat <laughs> again make the little movement lines like I just did here like it's in action and they can put the little nib lines on the flower get a little more distinctive so I'm just going back and forth when you go fast and using this pen nib thing it's gonna could be a problem. There's my little lines. Now I don't have to use go over every single line. Just a couple more here. This is a really fast, simple, easy tutorial. If you're not used to using this kind of technique with the with the fountain pen nib. This would be a good way to start. Something simple, a simple design. I have a bunch of other ones that are like that also. And listen, if you guys want to add more flowers, more things to this, go right ahead. All right. You see how we have the the orange and the yellow coordinate. I mean, excuse me, the orange and the blue. <laughs> I'm losing it today. So they kind of coordinate, right? Be kind of great They're together as a series. But do any color you want. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice is very low. Um, yep, yeah, we're dealing with the old thing that's going around. I'm totally fine, by, by the way. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's just a simple ink and wash, butterfly, trying to do something that's more fun and carefree today, get you out of your comfort zone, and just something simple. Um, you know, like change, you don't have to do monarch and blue. And this is like the side view of the butterfly. You can do any kind of colors in here and put little patterns in them, dots, whatever. It's just something fun and easy to do. For a beginner, you know, who hasn't really been working on the ink and washed much. So I figured I'd do one of those today. So if you have any questions, leave in the comment section. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you haven't hit the bell notification button, please hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. Thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel. Thank you guys for subscribing. I appreciate all of you and have a great day.